Hey guys, Tim here from TimKipTutorials.com and welcome to another Android development tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to have a visual representation of the Android life cycle. Now in our previous tutorial I sort of briefly explained how all these method methods were fired off. So when your activity launched you have on create, on start, on resume, when your activity is officially running, and then when you go outside of your application you, your activity runs on pause. So then when the user returns to your activity, it will hit on resume. And then once you hit on pause again, go do something else. You're going to hit on stop whenever your app decides that it's going to be killed. It's going to come back and do on create again. And so when you're in, the activity is no longer visible, it hits on stop, and then the user comes back to the activity, it's going to hit on restart. So an example of coming from on stop to on restart would be if you press the home button on your application, or while you're in your application and then you go launch your application again it's going to hit on restart and then when you're finished using your application whether you code in a finish method or your activity gets destroyed it's going to call on destroyed and then your activity is going to shut down so over here on the left what I've done is just set up a basic project which in a class name main activity which is extending activity and at the top I've just declared a private final variable you don't really know, need to know what this do, does at this moment, but I'll briefly explain it. Private means that this variable will only be accessible in this class alone. Final means that it can no longer be changed anywhere else in the code. So once it's set here, that's what it's set for. And the type of variable is string. In my, my variable name, I've just named tag, all uppercase. And so we have a private variable that can never be changed that is a string with a variable name of tag. And all that is equal to tkt, which I put in double quotes. So when I call tag, it's going to output tkt. So down here, we have our normal onCreate method, which all I'm doing is it's just passing the super method for onCreate back. And then I'm calling this function or method called log. Now what log is, is it allows us to send messages to ourselves as we're running our application. It's not going to be visible on the device, but the program inside of Android Studio called the Logcat will be able to detect these logs and will display them on the screen for you. So all I'm doing is I'm passing in my tag name as the first parameter. You could have put anything you would like here. You could say TKT here, you could name it Android, whatever you want. That's just a name that's going to show up in your log as an identifier for that actual line. So I'm just going to go back, set it to my variable name of tag, and it has to be a string. The two parameters for log is a string and a string. And you notice how I have log.d. The dot d stands for debug. If I were to come down here and say log dot, and then you'll see a bunch of code hints that say d, e, i, v, they all stand for different um, levels of warnings. So this is a debug. Um, I is for info, informational logs. V is for verbose. And W is for warning. So there's just def different types of errors. Or not errors, but logs that you can throw. So in this case, I'm just using a debug so I can debug it. And the string I'm going to have displayed on the screen is on create which is a reference to what method we're in right now. So you see that I have all these methods according to our chart over here. I have them all overwritten here. So I have on start, which I'm logging on start, on restart, on restart. So you get the idea. I have everything coded out so it will hit every single function. So now what we can do is we can run this on your emulator and if you haven't figured out how to run it, you just hit this little green arrow up here, and it will build your project, and then you can pick an emulator or an actual physical device that's plugged into your computer to run it on. So I have my emulator on the right here. I'm just going to go to my application that's installed. Go to the menu, and I'm going to hit Android Lifecycle. So when that starts, you'll see nothing happens on the screen. But if you do, you can come back over here, and in this Android tab right here, number six, click on that, and you'll see that an Android DDMS comes up. 
it might be at the bottom you can click at the top and drag it and you'll probably see a bunch more things depending on if you've just launched your emulator or installed your application so what I like to do is I like to use this drop down and I'm gonna go to debug because remember we're using log.d and in this little search box here remember my tag name was that I set to TKT I'm just gonna type TKT in what that's gonna do is filter out all the results and only show the ones that I want to see as you can see we have three lines here on create on start and on resume so those match exactly with what the activity is supposed to do when it first starts up on create on start and on resume so now the activity is running so say we're over here in our emulator and we go to the home screen it looks like we have a couple more lines let's see what they are we have on pause and then we have on stop so remember on pause is when the activity is no or when a different activity comes into the foreground so in this case the foreground activity was the home screen so your application that I'm running now goes into the on pause mode and the acti activity is no longer visible so it went to on stop so now what's gonna happen if we go back to our activity we're gonna hit the menu again we're gonna go back to Android lifecycle see we here we have some more lines and now we've hit on restart on start and on resume so what it did, while well, we are here on on stop, I, I navigated back to the activity, it went to on restart, and then it went to start, and then on resume, and now the activity is running again. So you can see how this life cycle is sort of following the chart exactly how we expect it to. So what happens when we actually hit the back button on our activity? So I'm just going to hit back. Notice how we've hit on pause on stop and now we fit on destroy so that basically means since the back button is a way to actually finish your activity or destroy it it cause er, I'm sorry hold on let me go back we were running we hit the back button so it runs through on pause on stop and since we are finishing and destroying the activity by pushing the back button we hit on destroy and the activity shuts down so now our activity is actually gone from the memory, it's shut down, we have no reference to it anymore. So now, when we go back and run Android Lifecycle, you'll notice that we started right over from the top, on create, on start, on resume. Which is, makes sense, because we've shut down our activity, we went back and started again, it's going to start all the way from activity launched, on create, on start, on resume. So that's sort of a visual representation of how it sort of works in your emulator if you're in your application and something else comes up it's gonna go to on pause and it's gonna go to on stop you can always go back to it granted that it hasn't been or granted that the operating system has not destroyed your activity in case of memory um, issues it's gonna hit the on restart again and then it's gonna hit on or I'm sorry on restart and then it's gonna go to on start and on resume and then your activity is going to launch again so sorry for the sort of confusion but you can sort of see it's going to follow all these all right and that should do it for our visual representation of an android lifecycle activity i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i hope to see you in the next one